One critical aspect of understanding riverine systems is knowing the stream discharge. Stream discharge is the rate at which a volume of water passes through a cross-sectional area. In this lab, we are going to practice measuring stream discharge using the velocity area method. This method works by finding the area of a given cross-section of the stream and multiplying the area by the velocity of water that passes through this section. In order to find the velocity of the water, we will be using a Marsh McBurney flow meter. This meter reads the velocity of water in units of meters per second. Since stream flow is not constant through the entire channel, we will first have to go through and divide the channel into multiple subsections. These subsections account for the varying channel geometry as well as the varying velocities. In general, it is important to keep each of these subsections to account for no more than 10% of the flow. But keep in mind that the ideal measurement is when the subsection only accounts for about 5% of the flow. This means it is typical to divide up the system into 20 or 30 subsections. While dividing larger systems into this many subsections is not a problem, when dealing with smaller systems, like Allen Creek, it can be a problem. In creating the subsections for streams like Alum Creek, it is important to measure the velocity at multiple different regions where the depth and the velocities vary from other subsections. One of the first steps to measuring the discharge is to find the area of the first subsection. To find the area, you have to measure the width and the depth of the section. The width can be measured using a tagline or a tape measure. The depth can be measured using a top setting weighting rod. Now that we know the width and the depth of the first subsection, we can now find the area as well as the location for the first velocity measurement. One important step in using the velocity area method is that flow must be measured in the middle of each subsection. Another important step is to measure the flow at the correct depth. For systems that are deeper than half a meter, you must take two readings at two different depths to find the average velocity. These two depths are at two tenths depth as well as at eight tenths depth. For systems shower than half a meter, only one reading is required per subsection. That single reading is required at six tenths of the total depth. You can find the six tenths depth by taking the total depth and multiplying it by point six. In order to divide up our stream into multiple different sections, we first need to measure the width of the stream. This can be done by taking a tape measure and staking it across the width of the stream. When you stake the tape measure down, you need to make sure that you stake it perpendicular to the flow of the stream. Here the width of the stream is 0.75 meters or 75 centimeters. In this section to measure the discharge, we're going to divide it into five equal subsections. And in order to do that, we need to take the width and divide it by the number of subsections that we're going to have. In order to show you how we found the width of each subsection, I'm going to show you how we quickly found it. So in order to find the width of each subsection, you have to take your width of the stream and divide it by the number of subsections that you want. In our case, the width of our stream was 0 0.75 meters and we're going to divide it into five subsections. So here, each of our subsections is going to be 0 0.15 meters wide. But since we want to measure the flow in the middle of each subsection, we need to figure out what the middle of this first subsection is to find the velocity in that first area. So in order to do this, we need to take this number and divide it by 2, which is 0 0.075 meters, or 7.57 centimeters. Now we can go out into the field 
measure our first velocity at 0 0.075 meters from the shore or 7.5 centimeters away from the shore. We also need to measure the depth and then the velocity, which then will give us the discharge for that first area. Now let's go into the field and practice this. In order to take our first measurement, we now have to hook up the Marsh McBurney flow meter to the weighting rod. This process of hooking it up is rather simple. You just take this little end, the node that goes into the water, and slide it right over the end, making sure to secure it down. Now, we want to take our first reading, 7.5, 0.5 centimeters from the shore, or 0 0.75, 0 0.075 meters. Since we also need to know the area of the channel, we're also going to take a recording of the depth as well. Here, by looking at the notchings on the weighting rod, I found that the channel depth is 10 centimeters, or 0 0.1 meters. Now, since the average flow of water is at 6 tenths depth, we need to find the 6 tenths depth mark. Since this portion of the channel is 10 centimeters deep, 6 tenths of the depth is at 6 centimeters. So now we must go up six centimeters. Now that I moved the weighting rod up to six tenths depth, I'm ready to take my first reading. Need to wait to make sure the meter levels off. In this section, of the channel, the flow is going at 0 0.88 meters per second. By taking the area of this little subsection and multiplying it by the velocity of the water, we can then find the discharge rate. Since we need to find the flow in the middle of the subsection, we need to find the distance from the shore that we have to move over. That can be found by taking the distance from the shore for this first reading that we just did and adding it to the distance of each subsection. So here it would be 0 0.075 meters plus 1.5 meters, which gives us a distance of 0.225 meters or 22.5 centimeters. Now I'm going to move the rod over to this, to this width. Now that the rod is over in the second subsection, I now again have to take a depth reading. Here, the depth of the channel is 0.14 meters or 14 centimeters. Now in order to measure the velocity, again, we must move the stream gauge into the 6 tenths depth. Here, the 6 tenths depth is 8 centimeters or 0 0.08 meters. Now we must move the weighting rod up to that height. With the weighting rod at the right height, we can now take a reading on the velocity of the water. Here, the velocity of water is 0 0.75 meters per second. Now, by taking this velocity and multiplying it by the area, we'll be able to get the discharge for this section. Now, we're going to continue across the stream, taking readings at each subsection, and then adding up the discharge from each subsection across the river to get the total discharge.
we took our discharge measurements in this cross section of Alum Creek, the first thing we did was measure the width of the stream. Here, the stream width is 0.75 meters. Then, we examine the creek to decide how many subsections to divide it into. At this section of Alum Creek, we decided to divide it into five subsections, meaning that each subdivision is going to be 0.15 meters wide. Next, we took the depth measurement in our first subsection, which turned out to be 0.1 meters. Once we found the 6 tenths height, we then took our first velocity measurement. The velocity in this first subsection was 0.88 meters per second. Then we moved on to the second subsection. In the second section, we found that the depth of the stream was 0.14 meters. Then we found that the velocity at the 6 tenths depth was 0.75 meters per second. On to the third section, where the depth of the stream was 0.13 meters and the velocity was found to be 0.35 meters per second. In the fourth section of the stream, the depth was 0.03 meters and the velocity was 0.07 meters per second. Finally, on the fifth section of the stream, we found that the depth of the stream was so low that we could not get an accurate reading on the velocity. So, in cases like this, you can consider the discharge to be negligible. Now that we have all the pieces of the puzzle, we can now put them together and find the total stream discharge by multiplying the individual areas by the corresponding velocities, then adding up these individual discharges. Now it's time to set up our equation and do the final step. Since the width of each section is constant between each of the subsections, we can factor out the width and multiply it through later. As for setting up the inside of the equation, we need to take our depth from the first subsection and multiply it by the velocity from section 1 as well. That quantity will be added to the depth of section 2 multiplied by the velocity of section 2. Now again, we will have to add the depth times the velocity of section 3 and 4 as well. As for section 5, as we determine that the flow in this section is negligible. With the equation set up now, we can now do the multiplication to complete the next step. Now it's time to add the values within the parentheses. With taking the final step of multiplying the constant width to our value in the parentheses, we will find the total discharge for this section of Alum Creek. Thank you for spending the time to learn how to do stream flow measurements using a current meter. Now you should be able to go out into the field and practice what you just learned.